I was in Miami when I received a long distance call from a woman. Her name was Anita Lawson. She explained we'd never met, but that she learned how to reach me through mutual friends. She sounded upset and not altogether coherent. She said she had to see me immediately. Normally I investigate people I don't know, but she sounded so desperate I agreed to catch a plane for Oklahoma City. I checked into a hotel, telephoned and told her I'd be right over. As I hung up the phone, I had a feeling that Anita Lawson and her problem might be more than ordinary trouble. and greeted me and started talking. She had married Blake Lawson eight years ago when he was wildcatting for oil. They'd had a rough time, and one day he didn't come home. Months later, she heard from him, a letter mailed from Cairo. He wanted a divorce. Because of their young son, Kip, she had refused to give it to him. She got a job, made some small investments, and set about raising the boy. A year ago, Blake returned. This time, she asked for a divorce. He became violent and was sent to jail for a year. A few days ago, he'd been released. He needed money and she had given it to him. Then he'd asked to see Kip. Anita Lawson seemed to hesitate. She became frightened again, so I asked, Where's Kip now? That's the whole problem, Mr. Lanyard. Last night, when I returned home, the maid told me Blake had picked up Kip that afternoon. They haven't returned yet. I keep telling myself it'll be all right, but I'm almost out of my mind. I want Kip back. Do you think you can help me, Mr. Lanyard? I don't know. I wouldn't know where to start looking for Blake Lawson. Well, Blake usually heads for any new oil strike. He might do that again. Well, it's a, it's a long shot, but it might be worth a try. I know it sounds trite, but try not to worry. If you do find Blake, Please be careful. He can be very difficult. Bring Kip back. That's all I want. I walked into McClinty's hotel. I saw a creep. And I knew I'd caught up with Blake Lawson. Ha! You're showing creep the way home, babies. Just keep walking and talking. Ha! Made it. There's a hundred that's just dying for company. What's the matter? No taking? Can I get any play around here? You're covered. Ha! Ace, deuce, murder. Ha! Six is my point. Ha! That's my point. play with. Matches? Pick up your money. Why? I want some information. That should buy a lot of information. Yeah. I'm looking for a man. His name's Blake Lawson. <laughs> you answer me a question. Who are you? Mark Lanyard. And what do you want from me? I'm looking for a job. What do you do? I'm a Rastabot. <laughs> Pretty expensive sport coat. No calluses. I think you're a private cop, mister. I want to try and prove it. <laughs> okay. You're not bad at that. My name's still Lanyard. I'm still looking for a job. Creep, see if you can find Ed, huh? Come on, sit down. Okay. Bro, 
roustabout, huh? Yeah. We're rigging a well on the old Masterson site. It's supposed to be a dead field, but I got my hopes. I guess I could use another hand. You looking for me, Blake? Yeah, honey, this is uh, Mike Lanyard. I'd like you to meet Ed McClinty. <laughs> okay, let's get it over with. My father was one of those kinds that swore he'd never have a girl in the family. So when I came along, he just refused to admit it. Huh. Lanyard just got into town. He's going to work with me on old number five. You got another room in this fire trap? Well, I've got the room. So you got the money? We start drilling tomorrow at six. Be there on time. I'll be there. I'll shake hands with you now. Don't make me sorry I did, huh? What's the funny look for? Oh, he seems like a nice guy. Oh, yeah. I guess you could say that. But then, I'm not much of a judge. I have to be in love with the guy. Come on, I'll show you your room. What's holding up those torpedoes? I tell you, it's crazy dropping this much juice. You're liable to blow yourself right off this earth. You'll need every bit of it. We struck a solid sheet of granite. And if we go through, what do we get? Just more dust. You think so? Take a taste of that water sample. Well, it's greasy, all right. You bet it's greasy. Oil greasy. You need any help? You get paid to work. Not get yourself killed. All right, everybody, clear this well. Hurry it up. Come on, let's go. Blake had to drop the five nitro explosives into the well, then get away before the first one would explode and set up a chain reaction. Hurry it up, hurry it up. You boys cap that well. Hurry it up. Mind it. I had you all wrong. I guess it's about time I said I'm sorry. I had every reason to believe somebody was looking for me. And up until 30 seconds ago, I thought it was you. That's why I wanted you around close. See how you plan to play it. Like I said, I'm sorry. Sorry for my man like Lawson meant something. And I felt like a heel. I wanted to say the same thing, but I couldn't. And for the time being, I didn't care. I'd awakened in Ed McClinty's room. I looked at the globe, covered with small flags, and wondered if they meant something in Blake's life. Hello, Ed. Hi, Mike. How are you feeling? Okay. Mike, I'm not very good with the soft-spoken words, but... Right now, I want to say thanks for what you did yesterday afternoon. If anything had happened to Blake, everything would have ended for me. How is Blake? You were both lucky. Yeah. I was looking at your globe. Do those flags mark your itinerary? My life. Except for the year and a half Blake was married. During that time, I didn't see him. Oh? Who 
did he marry? A girl by the name of Anita Forster. Her father was a wildcatter, made and lost a fortune. During that time, Blake held a lease that looked more promising than the Treasury Department. Anita liked money, so she married him. And then what happened? Well, several months later, the well came in a duster. It cost Blake a great deal, but Anita didn't seem to care as long as she could keep her expensive apartment in Dallas and all the things that went with it. Finally, Blake was dead broke. And she divorced him, huh? No, Anita wasn't that humane. She made him run all over the world trying to make a strike. Iran, South America, Saudi Arabia, you name it. Yeah. He must have loved her very much. No, but he loved their son. And from then on, it's nobody's business but Blake's. Come in. Hi. Hi. Well, you look mighty fit for a guy who's been hit with a pipe. You're downright lucky. Blake's going fishing again tonight. Said you had some equipment for him to take. Oh, yeah. Tell him I got just what he asked for. I also baked a chocolate cake for him to take along. <laughs> Pretty fancy eating for a fishing trip, huh? Yeah. Chocolate cake. Hey, Ed, how's chances of me licking the bowl? The box was from a local clothing store. Inside, I found a pair of Levi's, the size you'd buy for a six-year-old boy. I remembered Creep's words. There's been a lot of uphill in Blake's life. And I couldn't forget Ed's statement. Anita wasn't that humane. I still had to locate Kip, but I made up my mind to find out if I was working for the wrong side. I don't think Blake's gonna take to me bringing you back to the well so soon. He wants you to get well first. I can't think of a better cure than a night of fishing. Oh, forget it, Mike. I'm not that bad company. No, but Blake is. He don't take nobody. He don't tell me where he's going. He must have a pool of bass that just won't stop. Mike, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be taking it easy. I feel okay. What about the well? Your theory, right? Yeah, we get oil, all right. We just finished capping. It's low-grade stuff, but it might get better. I'll be back at 7 in the morning and creep. Keep these monkeys working. I want that well pumping steady by tomorrow night. Right. I'd like to say it again, Mike. Thanks. Maybe I can pay you back someday. You can start right now. I also like to fish. Some other time, huh? I felt. I was almost sure that Anita Lawson had played me for a sucker. There was only one thing missing. Why had she gone to all this trouble just to fool me? Then I began to ask myself questions about Blake. I wondered why he would kidnap his son. Why hadn't he gone to court? Why hadn't he tried to obtain legal custody of Kip? done to be sentenced to a year in the state prison. I thought I was getting close to the right answer, but I needed the key. I had a feeling that Blake Lawson's story might be that key. And the truck stopped. of calling her and explaining that I hadn't been able to find Blake. But I knew that wouldn't do any good. Even if Blake had a good reason for taking Kip, there's a law that says it's wrong. I had to find a way to make Blake level with me. I was sorry I hadn't told him the whole story this afternoon. I felt that I had been as unfair to him as he was in keeping Kip hidden. It was time for Blake and me to be honest with each other. No more lies.
What do you want? I think you know. Hello, Kip. Hello. Is this your private oil field? Blake had built Kip a miniature oil field, and the boy excitedly told me it was called Lawson's Field Number 7. It was no trick to see that Kip was happy and very much at home. Blake told him it was time for bed, but Kip protested the well was about to blow in. His father went along with him and said, You got all your rigging secured? Jack. Okay. Drop your nitro. There she goes. Hold your ears. Bang! Boy, look at that. Gee, Dad, we got a gusher. I bet she's good for 50,000 barrels a day. You know, I think it's about time Charlie took you and put you to bed, don't you, huh? Good night, partner. Okay. Good night, son. Nice kid. You know, for a while, Len, you I thought I had you all wrong. But I see you are working for Anita. Let's say I'm working for the boy. You plan to take him back with you? All I plan to do is tell her where he is. That's the same thing. Why? You're his father. Any reason why you can't fight for him? Listen, any fighting I do for that kid is going to be done right here. Don't be a fool, Blake. You've already got a record. You know, sometimes... I think it's not meant for a guy to understand people. For a while, I thought I had you all wrong. You know something, Lanyard? I was about to call you a friend. If you have a legal right to the boy, I'll help. All right, what's the matter with you? Fight! Tell me what happened. Why do you have to do everything your wife says? Stop it, Blake! Oh. Stop it! What are you doing here, Ed? Creep, Miss Mike, it all added up. I knew what you'd do. I had to stop you. Oh, forget it. No, no, please don't. Besides, no grave would have him. Okay. So it's I hate lanyard week. Will you tell me why? Maybe the way we live up here puts dirt under our nails, Mr. Lanyard, but we're not stupid. You know the score. I know that Anita Lawson said the boy was in danger and wanted him back, that's all. Well, then let me fill you in. Anita Lawson married Blake for one reason, a million bucks but he never quite made it. She had a son to hold over his head as a threat. Oh, forget it. No, I won't forget it. You've been quiet about this thing long enough. Here's the whole story, Mr. Lanyard. Over 125,000. Blake never complained. He just kept sending money. It was while he was in South America that he really got his teeth knocked out. Nita wasn't content with one slave. Did you ever hear of Rod Kintner? The syndicate boss of the Southwest, yeah. Well, to Anita Lawson, he was a lot more. Stop it, Ed. No, it's about time somebody knew the truth about Anita. Blake came home and found Kintner. He almost killed him. If the court had known the reason, he never would have been sentenced. Why didn't you tell the court the truth, Blake? Did you ever think how it would affect the boy? Yeah. Anita was playing both ends against the middle. She knew you'd have to do everything she asked. To Anita, Kip was nothing but an annuity policy. She never loved him. She told me he was a good thing to have. So I did the only thing I could do, and that was to take Kip. Unless I wanted to fight it out in court, and I know I couldn't do that. Now she's trying to marry Miles Connor. It just doesn't make sense. Nita's no good, and yet she seems to get everything she wants. Yeah. I'm going to take the boy back. But if things go the way I think they will, he won't be gone for long. What if it doesn't go the way you think? And I'll be a charter member in the Hate Lanyard Club. I recognized Miles Connor. And as I watched Anita saying goodbye, more than ever, I understood Blake Lawson. Oh, Mr. Lanyard, have you found him? Yeah, I found him. Except for a few more freckles. 
an extra laugh or two. He's still the same boy. Oh, thank goodness. You can stop acting now. You knew Blake would never harm Kip. What do you mean? You made a mistake, Mrs. Lawson. You see, I know the whole story. I've seen those canceled checks. And now you're trying to be a hero. <laughs> you don't frighten me, Mr. Lanyard. I'm not trying to frighten you. I want you to listen. I'm not as nice as Blake. And as you would say, I have a lot of the right friends. Go on. I'm listening. I'm prepared to tell the story about you and Kintner. And I'll prove you never had any investments. Except yourself. You lose not only Kip, but you lose Connor and a lot of money. You realize what that story would do to Kip? You're not talking to Blake now. Kip being with his father would more than outweigh the publicity. How much do you want? You'll consider the price cheap. Kip. And in return, you can have a crack at the Connor millions. Miles asked me to marry him today. I've always wanted money. I guess you can't imagine how important that really is. But, as you say, the price is cheap. Yeah. I'll send the lawyer around tomorrow to make everything legal. I'll be here until five. Kip. Your father's expecting us for dinner. If we want to make it on time, we better leave now. It just came in, number 12, this came in. It's a gusture! <laughs> <laughs>